So this is a calibration tutorial for the International Telegraph Alphabet Lamp Board and you'll be familiar with this process if you have calibrated an Enigma lamp board before, it's exactly the same. This is all detailed in the ITA2 Lamp Board User Guide. We'll be referring to this throughout and if you go to page 3 you'll see the instructions written out. First step is to turn the module on and leave it to warm up for a few minutes. And while you're leaving it to warm up a bit you can go ahead and using the screwdriver that comes with the module turn the screw on this trimmer on the left hand side of the module all the way down these are 20 turn trimmers so you know after 20 turns that it's all the way down and you might hear a little click don't worry you can't damage the trimmer by turning it too much so for the next step you're going to want a reliable one volt per octave control source i'm going to use this korg sq1 but you can use a keyboard controller which was probably a bit easier and what we're going to want to do is send in to the input jack on the left hand side here one volt which corresponds obviously to one octave now when you send one volt into the pitch control of an oscillator that will go up 12 semitones an octave but in this case it's going to go up 12 characters and you can see in the user guide in the ita2 lamp board encoding table that if you go up 12 characters one octave here c to c you should be expecting an n to be lit up for me with my step sequencer i'm gonna set it so there's only one step being sent out so this knob here will control the voltage that we're sending and i'm gonna set that to chromatic mode and i'm gonna set the voltage range to one volt so if this knob is all the way up i know i'm sending out one volt Obviously, you're going to have to figure this out for your own controller. Now, if we press play on the sequencer, we should be wanting an N out. But actually, nothing happens. That's just because we've turned that trimmer all the way down. So now, what we can do is take the screwdriver and turn the trimmer up, turning clockwise to the right until that N is illuminated. And they're going to go up in sequence as we turn. So in the ITAC sequence, we can see the first lamp to be lit up is an E going to line feed, going to A, going to space. So as we turn this up, we should see those lighting up in sequence. E, line feed, A, and we're going to go all the way up until we reach an N. Don't be confused if the letters or figures lamp is lit up. They're meant to be lit up. That's indicating whether the lamp board should be read from the letters or figures column. Letters on the bottom here, figures at the top. As we go all the way up, there we go, we've reached an N. So first step complete. Now it's difficult for me to get the exposure right on the camera so you can actually see the lit up uh, character, but very easy to see in person. So now if you look at the next step, we're gonna send in some higher octaves and check on the table here that the correct lamp is being lit up for. So I'm gonna adjust the settings on my SQ1 here so that the full range of this pot is up to two volts. Now I'm sending in two volts and according to our table here at two volts, I should be seeing an O. I'm actually seeing a Q. So if we go back a page and we look at our ITA2 lamp board encoding table, we can go down here and see where the Q is. Q, there, and above it is an O. So we know that we need to turn that trimmer up so that the O will be selected. Let's do that now. Turn it clockwise until we see the O illuminated. There we are. Go back to one volt, check that the N is illuminating, and O for two volts. Perfect. Let's move on to some of the higher octaves now. Now I'm going to switch to 5 volts, and at 5 volts we should see the M illuminated. But actually what's happened is it's selected the figure shift. And if we look again at our table, we'll see the M and figure shift right next to each other. And we know that the trim needs to be turned up so that it selects the M. So it's still sending in 5 volts. I'm going to turn up that trim part until the M is illuminated and you will have noticed that the figure shift didn't turn off that's because it latches on until the letter shift is selected and vice versa so it won't turn off like the other characters would have done and I'll check back through and we've got N for 1 volts, O for 2 volts, M 
for 5 volts. So that's all looking good. It's nearly there. So now what we're going to do is step through chromatically all of the characters in sequence to check that there's no incorrect selections happening. And it can be handy to plug the output into the pitch control voltage input of a 1 volt per octave scaled oscillator so you can hear all the semitones stepping up as you go. And you want to be keeping an eye on this encoding table to make sure that they're all lighting up in the correct sequence. So we're going up and what you're looking for is something like this, where it appears that two characters are lit up at the same time. That'll tell you that the trim setting needs to be adjusted and you need to do a little bit of detective work to figure out if you need to turn it up or down. So from the setting that you know is wrong, if you go up or down a semitone, it should stabilise on one character here, an R, and if we look at our table here, we've got R, the next character in a sequence is a J, and then an N. So if we go up a semitone, that should be selecting solidly a J, but it's actually switching rapidly between the N, which is the next one in the sequence. So we know that we need to turn that trim pot down so that it's just solidly selecting the J. And that'll stabilise on the J there. So now if we step through the semitones, should be stable on each character in sequence. There you go. And you just want to continue going through the semitones chromatically and adjusting it finely so that all the characters are stable. The higher up in control voltage you go, the more finely adjusted that trim pot needs to be for it to be accurately represented on the lamp board, just because of those compounding errors. So you can carry on and chase the calibration all the way up to the limits of your voltage controller, but if you're just sending keyboard control voltages through this, you're playing melodies, are you going to be using ranges more than 5 octaves? Just calibrate it up to 5 volts and that will do fine for you. Now I'm going to tell you how to adjust this bell position here so you're getting the most out of it. Obviously, just so you know, this switch here turns the bell on and off and the bell is rung when the bell character is selected, but importantly, only when the figure shift is also selected. So you have to have the figure shift selected and then the bell character. If the letter shift is selected, you're actually selecting a J, not a bell. First of all, if it's working fine, leave it. It's all good. So the bell is sounded with this thing. It's called a solenoid, and it's an electromechanical component. It actually moves. So there is a mechanical limit to how fast it will actually be able to hit the bell. But that can be improved by the positioning of the bell. And the reason why you want to move this bell is because when this is going in and out really quickly, it's going to have less time to travel distance. So it's going to move in and out shorter distance if it's moving in and out quicker. And if the bell is too far away from the solenoid at slower speeds it will be able to hit it fine but at faster speeds the striker won't actually be able to reach the bell in time at the other end of the scale at slow speeds if this striker is traveling out too far it's gonna choke the sound of the bell and it's not gonna ring out nicely so you need to find that middle ground position where the striker is able to reach the bell at high frequencies but is not choking the sound of the bell at lower frequencies. So when it does a single strike it should ring out nicely like this. And when it's hitting it repeatedly at a fast speed it should ring out nicely like this. To adjust the bell position you're going to need to take the panel off and that's pretty simple disconnect it from the power take these two little screws out you can use the screwdriver that came with the module that you did the calibration with and you're also going to want to take these jack nuts off be careful that you don't lose any of this stuff very easy for it to drop off the desk and you'll never see it again you should be able to undo these with your fingers but you could use some pliers be very careful not to scratch the surface of the panel or you can use a little hex socket so once you've got those off the panel should just slip off and you can see underneath and here is the adjustment screw for the bell now when you turn it over as i just forgot all of these are gonna drop out 
that's fine. They're designed to do that. These are little baffles for the light so that when one LED is lit up, it doesn't stray over and light up the next character to it a little bit. Just put all those to the side for now. You don't want to be adjusting this while the module is powered on. Adjust it, then turn the module on, check that it's correct, turn it off and adjust it again. Now I'm going to move the bell and I'm going to let you hear what it should sound like when it's adjusted badly so you know what to avoid. Now obviously here, the bell is way too far away from the striker and you're not hearing it. So let's move that. But if I turn up the frequency, it'll get to a point where the striker is not moving far off and out to actually reach the bell. No, we need to move the bell across. Now I've moved it right the way across, but actually you can hear the bell isn't really ringing out very loudly. And you're mostly hearing the clack of the striker. So you want to move it back a little bit. So I find a good distance between the striker at rest and the bell is about two millimeters. That works quite nicely. Now you want to make sure that it's very, very tight on there because the actual force of the striker hitting the bell can move it and I use some thread locker uh, Loctite on there to make sure that it doesn't come loose so once you're happy you're going to want to put these little light baffles back on let me show you how to do that start with the three longer ones and they slot in where these white lines are now they'll only go in one way round so you'll have to figure that out for these two top lines the little uh, side goes to the left hand side and the bottom one is around the other way so this little bit here compared to this side goes on the right hand side and then each of these smaller ones slots diagonally through the slots in the horizontal baffles and the little odd shaped slot points downwards that's just to clear these pads along here for the sockets and if you marry up the slots they will go in nicely to each other. Here we are. Then put the panel over the little jack sockets. Put the screws in first. Make sure they're tight. Be careful not to scratch the panel with the screwdriver. Put the jack socket nuts on. These don't need to be super tight, do them finger tight, otherwise you might damage the socket. And there you go. So thank you for getting yourself one of these modules. I hope you enjoy it.